And thank you for joining Changing Chains Ministry. I'm Rochelle Owens. We are on Kingdom Purpose TV every Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We thank you for joining our broadcast, and we just welcome you to come on back. This is Valentine's Day weekend. We hope everyone is enjoying themselves and having a great time and having a great time in the Lord. We are going to be reviewing today Psalms 40. It's Psalms 40. Get your books, get your tablets, get your Bibles, and let's get off into the Word. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Lord, I thank you for giving us this day. I thank you for peace. I thank you for love. I thank you for joy. I thank you for happiness, Lord. I thank you for family unity. Family unity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for health. Thank you for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord. All right, we're going to get right into the word. Psalms 40, you guys know I like to read. So I'm just going to read a little bit for you today. And it starts off with, this is the Psalm of David. This is the Psalm of David, King David. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of history with David today. But, man, he was a great man of God. David was a great man of God. He started out kind of small in our eyes is what we think, but he was humongous in God's eyes. Oh my God. So never think of yourself in whatever situation that you're in. And I know life is a struggle and the struggle is real. It's real. And we never want to downplay that. But God has a good life for you. God has a good word for you. God is love. So let's celebrate love and the love of God with our families, with our friends, with ourselves. It starts with us. It starts right here, right here with ourselves. So I'm going to start reading today because, you know, I like to give out a reading because the word is life. As Psalms 40 states, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. This is the King James Version, which I always read. Okay, he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. And he has put a new song, hallelujah, he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Verse 4, Psalms 40. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. Let me say that again. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. And respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done. Yes, it is. I am a living witness. Hallelujah. I have to stop and thank God right there. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are towards us. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. Oh, God is magnificent. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You know, with everything he does, it says even here, if I would declare and speak of them, they would be more than can be numbered. 
God is a God that will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's always there with you. He's, his word is always there with you. God is a God that you can trust. God is love. No greater love. No greater love. Hallelujah. And God even lets us know here, and this is verse 6 of Isaiah 40. He says, sacrifice and offering you did not require. He didn't require it. He loved us unconditionally. Sacrifice and offering thou did not desire. Mine ears have thou opened. Hallelujah. Burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required at all. Unconditional love. And we know from last week that, and that was in uh, for anyone that in the new viewers, let me just clear that up. We were in Isaiah 43. God said, I created you. I redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I find you precious in my sight. What I will do for you, what I have done for you, will I will do to the last breath you breathe because I have loved you and you are mine. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And that's just Isaiah 43. And God just tells us how much he loves us 100%. I'm so excited about celebrating love this weekend. Yes, 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 yes. I am so excited about celebrating the love of God. I love my sister. I love my brother. I love my kids. I love my grandkids. Okay. I love everyone. But the love of God is something that it is so different. It is so peaceful. The love of God and the love that God bestows in us is just unimaginable. And I just like living and basking in the glow of God. It, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. You know, he guarantees us peace. Um, he guarantees us peace. And that's John 14. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. I give unto you, not as the world giveth, you know, and that is the peace of God, and I just, there's no greater place to be than in the love of God and the peace of God, and that's, I wish everyone, I wish everyone across the entire world peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace and the love of God. That's, I wish everyone, it's across the entire world, peace of God. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, Lord. Y'all right, though. Let me get off because I love the Lord. And as we say in Psalms 40, he heard my cry. He heard my cry. We're just going to go through this just a little bit. That I waited patiently for the Lord. And wait right there. And I just want to explain. Wait. How you wait for the Lord. And this says I waited patiently for the Lord. You wait. I wait with extremely high expectations. I have so many expectations of God that my weight is in peace because I know, hallelujah, I know what the Father can do. And you have to know that you 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 know. And that's where you get to wait patiently. 
Wait is a trust in God. Wait is a belief in his word. Wait is faith. Wait is relying on God 100%, knowing that his word cannot return unto him void. Whatever his word says, he will do. God is not a man that he can lie. God is the creator of the entire world, not just your city, but the entire universe. God created heaven and earth so he can create any circumstances that you need. God can create anything for you. He can create anything for me. And as I always state and as I always live, be it unto you according to your faith. If your faith is here, you increase it and increase it and increase it. And I'm telling you, the more you increase your faith, the further you are going to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those are words to live by. Those are words to live by. I'd rather have faith in God than anyone else. I'd rather have faith in God than anything else. As we are seeing right now, and this is what I'm talking about, waiting patiently on the Lord. Because wait has a lot of stuff involved into it. Wait. While you're waiting, you have to do some action also. There's some action involved. There's action on your part. You have to believe God. You have to trust God. You have to get into the word of God. Here in verse 7, it says, Then said I, I, the great I am, the Jehovah God, it says, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It is, and that's why I love to read. I love to read the book because it is the word of God. 100%. It's the word of God. Get yourself one that you can read and understand and become one with God. His word is true. You stay, you get your scripture, you stand on the scripture and you cannot lose. It's guaranteed. God's word is the only thing that's guaranteed in life. That's it. God's word is guaranteed and you can bring it to him. You can remind him of it. You could talk to him about it. You get understanding. You get wisdom. You get knowledge. Oh my God, I said wisdom. Don't let me go off on wisdom. But you get understanding. You get wisdom. You get knowledge. Wisdom will take you anywhere you want to go. And wisdom is just knowing the word of God and the relationship that you have with God. As we see right here in this passage of Isaiah, I mean of Psalms 40, it says, I waited. I waited with high expectation. I waited with scripture. I waited with prayer. I waited with fasting. I waited patiently for the Lord. I waited in the word. I studied to show myself approved. I saw the scriptures. I saw the word. God, I saw everything you said you would do. I said, all the promises that you made me. Ooh, hallelujah. When you walk through the water, when you go through the flood, when you go through the fire, it can't overflow you. It can't touch you. It can't do nothing. God, that's what you told me. A thousand will fall out thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it will not touch me. That's what you told me. And I believe you. I believe you and I believe your word. And I have studied 
It's, but it, I, you get a good education in it. Oh my God, I just get excited. I get excited. But that's your weight. Your weight isn't in fear or being afraid. Your weight isn't God, what is going to happen today? God, what is going to happen today? God, what is going to happen today? God, what is happening? Your weight is in communing with God. God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to trust you. God, I am going to trust you. I'm going to trust you in this situation. Lord, I know you're going to bring me out. I don't know how. I don't know when. But you know what? I'm not going to even worry about it. I'm going to rely on you 100%. Hallelujah. And that's when you do, he don't have a choice. He don't have a choice. And with God, God is not a man. God is not within our realm, so to speak, as the way we think. He does it in a different way than you could ever imagine. And he uses someone that you could never imagine. Ever. There's, they say there's something called angels unaware. And it definitely is. It definitely is. So be aware. Be aware of angels unaware. Because they show up out of nowhere. Oh, they show up out of nowhere. And a good example is, I, I remember, I'm just thinking about the book of Joshua at this time. And Joshua was fighting the battles and everything. And then Joshua saw a man standing over there, a nice little tall statue. And Joshua would say, Joshua went over towards him. And Joshua would say, are you for me or against me? And he looked at Joshua and he said, neither one. And Joshua said, you're not for me, you're not against me. He said, no. I come from God. Oh, my God. He said, I'm the captain of the host. I was like, whoa. Joshua fell, and he kneeled down, and he said, oh, Lord. So that's just one example that... Do not, to be aware of your angels unaware and come out of what the God says, renew your mind so you will be able to receive from God. What he says right here in Psalms 40, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And guess what happened? He inclined unto me. God on high inclined unto me oh my god and inclined means that god on high doing everything he's doing in all of his magnificent he said hold on and he looked down on me and an incline goes in a slant i'm like hallelujah from up to he looked down on me and he heard my cry. He heard my cry because what? You are mine. I am a child of God. And it would be the same as you hear a baby cry. They have different, different kinds of sounds. They have the cool. You can, and after you get to know them real good, uh, you know when they're hungry, you know when they're wet, you know when they're in trouble, you know when you need to get up and run, you know when you need to go to, you can go into the kitchen and fix a bottle and warm it up and everything and prepare the milk, go get the diaper or pamper or everything, then you can go into the room. But then there's another cry. Woo! Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is another cry. You hear that. And you just run. It's over. I got to get to my baby. And that's what he did. God heard it because you waited patiently. You read your scriptures. You did your prayer. You did your fasting. You actually started believing in him. God, I believe you and I trust you. And you know what? I'm not going to even think about it anymore. 
Why? Because I'm going to believe you are going to do this. And once you do, I just want to encourage everyone. Once you do, God shows up and shows out. And that's what this passage right here, and that's Psalms 40. I waited. I did everything I did. I did all kind of action after action after action after action. Okay? Action. He inclined unto me. He heard my cry. And what did God do? He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Wherever you were laying, wherever you was, he brought me up out of depression. He brought me up out of stress. He brought me up out of frustration. He brought me up. Woo, hallelujah. He hurt. I, oh my God. I did what I had to do and he did what he had to do. And the word is true. And you could even just stand on that because God, this is what you said. I recommend everyone read Psalms 40. Oh my God. It is so good. He brought me up out of the horrible pit. And everybody know a pit. And sometimes we dig ourselves in a hole. We make bad decisions. I make bad decisions. Everyone makes bad decisions. We are only human. We dig ourselves in a hole. God has come down and get us up out of there. And he brought me up out of a horrible pit. He brought me up out of drugs. He brought me up out of alcohol. He brought me up out of depression. He brought me up out of suicide. He brought me up. And that's what that actually means. And you see how it's a two-way street. I was waiting patiently for the Lord. I was doing this, 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 and that. I had all these actions going. I was praying. I was fasting. I was believing him. I was studying his word. I was standing on his scripture. I was communing with him. And he brought me up out of a horrible pit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, his word is real and his word is good. It's good for you. It's good for me. It's good for the soul because God is love, unconditional, unadulterated love. And as he said right here, I didn't require anything from you. I didn't require the sacrifice, the offerings. I, I didn't desire any of that because you're mine. I love you. I created you. I created you. And I know the plans that I have for you. And my plans are perfect peace. My plans for you, said the Lord, are perfect peace. And you can't have perfect peace having lack, no food, uh, what, getting evicted. That's not perfect peace. You can't have perfect peace depressed. You can't have perfect peace going through a divorce. You can't have perfect peace. And his plans are perfect, perfect peace. And that's a peace, and that's a perfection that you don't see every day because it's of God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This just gets good. This gets good. That's why I read a couple of the, that's why I read, um, what I read from one through seven for you guys, because it just gets so good. He brought me out the horrible pit out of the miry clay. So you in a horrible pit and also miry clay. Oh my God. That's sinking sand. That's quicksand. Miry clay is the thickest that you can be. It's wet, so that's uncomfortable, and it's deep. The miry clay is sticky. It, it's quicksand. You just sink in it and slowly sink in. It, it's like everything, and you can't get out of it because, you know, quicksand, you just really can't get out of quicksand at all. God has to come and get you out. Someone has to throw you a rope and they have to pull you out of there. And that's why the word, and that's why he says in the beginning, get to the word, get to the word of God, get to a good old Bible believing, 
God-fearing church gets with Christian people, you cannot do it alone. And being alone is what the devil uses to get you alone. So he could just work on you and work on you and work on you. And by the time you get through, you will be in a horrible pit. You're down in the miry clay and you cry out to God. And God's word say he will come and get you. And what he did was he set his feet up on a rock and he established his goings. Now he set your feet up on a rock, which is a hard surface that will not be broken easily and then he established your goings so once you get up you stay with god because you will be finding yourself in sinking sand again god loves you god is love and god wants you to be in perfect peace and then god has a plan for your life also and he wants you to come to him to get his plan for your life done sometimes we wonder we go around in circles and circles and circles and we wind up at the same place and we don't know really what's going on but most often it's because God has a plan for your life and now you're in season and it's time for you to start his plan for your life. And as you see here in Psalms 40, you can be in a horrible pit, whatever your pit is. Your pit is your situation. You can be in the miry clay which is just sticky earth that's difficult to get through. So we always get, we're in the earth, so we can be in a real sticky situation in earth that is very difficult for us to get through. And all God says is, Lo, verse 7, I come to you in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Get in the book. Get my word deep down in you. Get my thoughts down in you. And you will be victorious every time. Because my will for you is to have perfect peace. In Jesus' name. We just want to encourage you today. Wait patiently on the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. His word is true. His word is real. His word works today. The same that it has always worked since the creation of time when he created it. God wants to show you his love. God wants to show you his might. God wants to show you his power. It's a two-way street. It takes action on your part. We love you. We are Changing Change Ministry. I'm Rochelle Owens. Check us out on Facebook at Changing Change Ministry, changingchange.org. 